welcome to another episode of Queendom Gems where we are developing our mind, hearts, and the come up. I am your queen. Today we are going to be talking about sales. That's right. Yes, I have the same outfit on that I did in the last video because I recorded it before this one. I may or may not edit that out. We'll see. All right. So when you talk about sales, you would be surprised or I would be surprised, I guess I should say, how many people aren't familiar with these steps to the sale. The steps to the sale are the most important thing you can ever learn. Let me say it again. The steps to the sale are the most important thing that you could ever learn. Why? It is a master formula. Have you ever heard the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Don't go trying to reinvent the wheel, just use the wheel. If you are too stubborn to learn techniques and methods that already work, do not ask me for help. I'm just gonna be blatant, plain, and put it out there. I cannot tell you guys how many people will come to me for consulting, for help, for advice, for mentorship, for development, for guidance, and they don't wanna learn the process. You have to respect order and process if you want to get an outcome. That's with anything. So if you want to make a cake, somebody tells you, here's how you make a cake. And you say, mm -mm, I've been making cake. I know how to make cake. I'm going to make the cake this way. And if your cake come out crazy, dry, crumbly, or nasty, don't look at the person that you asked to help you make the cake crazy because they tried to give you a formula for success and you did not want to take it. So if you are looking for a formula that is going to work no matter what industry you're in, no matter if it's e-commerce, in-person sales, whether or not you're selling an actual product or if you're actually into a service industry or something like that, whatever it is that you're trying to do, this can even work with relationships. And I actually use this, you know, as an analogy with especially if I'm training guys, you know, with my guys and my fellas, I'll tell you, you know, here's ways that this can also happen. Like if you're trying to pick up a girl or if you're trying to, you know, holla at a shorty, think she fine or whatever. All of these things are based on human psychology. Now, sales talks about a lot of things. It covers a lot of different avenues. If you're not familiar with Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, I highly encourage you to study it. If you want some help, you can grab my ebook or wait around for when I give it away for free because I do give it out sometimes. So that's why you should have your notifications on and you should be subscribed to this channel. That way you can find out when I'm doing giveaways, right? Otherwise, you can head over to queenofmarts.com and go to books, so click the little book icon or it's at the bottom of the page and you can head over and buy that book. It is going to change at the top of the year. Right now, it's $15.50 on my birthday, December 16th, 2022. It's going up, okay? The price on everything is going up because I'm starting this channel. I'm gonna give you guys a lot of free game on here and I gotta take care of myself, you know what I'm saying? I spend my third time. How irresponsible would it be for me to teach you how to make more money and not go get my own coins? So, without further ado, let's get into it. Steps to the sale. Why is it important? Not just because of the whole however many, one minute, four, three to four minute rant that I just went on about it. It's important because it works. It works, it works, it works. I cannot convey to you enough how many years I have been in this industry and it works, literally. The reason why it works is because we all have a process that we make emotional decisions through. Money is an emotional decision-making process. I talk about that in my book, The Psychology of Sales. The first thing you have to understand is that you're asking somebody to give a currency. It doesn't have to be just money. It can be time. It can be a resource. Whatever it is that you're exchanging with another person, if it is a transaction, that is an emotional process. Now, the world will convince us that it's a logical process because it requires logic and different things like that. You have to have... Blah, 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 it's emotional. If you've ever been in a situation to have an account get overdrawn for something random, you know how that feels. That's an emotional response. If you've ever had somebody readily give you something of high monetary value or money out of nowhere that you weren't expecting, or even if you weren't expecting it, it made you feel a certain type of way. If you ever saw something out in the store and you just loved it and you began to covet it and you're like, oh my God, I have to have 
this thing and then you find out oh it costs what actually i don't want that you just went through a whole emotional roller coaster you're on an emotional roller coaster that's why some of y'all don't like shopping right so Understanding that this is an emotional process means that it also is an emotional key to unlocking it. And a lot of companies teach you really sleazy methods. A lot of companies teach their employees horrible methods and tactics to manipulate this system. I'm going to teach you ways to not finesse the system, but optimize the system. Okay, so today we're going to be going over how you can optimize the steps of the sale and learn how to make it work optimally for your brand, business, product, service, or thing. Right? So, step number one introduction. You can automatically tell whether or not somebody's about to sell you by how they introduce themselves, right? You know, the people that you saw step in the mall, the person that's at the booth and they're like, hi, and they stand up real excited, all right? We'll talk about all that kind of stuff. I should do a video on trade show etiquette, how to be successful in selling at pop-ups trade shows. That's not what we're talking about here today, but I'll probably come up with a lot of other things that I should tell you about while we're doing it. That's good. So, step number one is going to be introduction. How you introduce yourself matters. You need to genuinely be trying to get to know the person. Okay? Be genuine and be yourself. People can feel inauthenticity from a mile away. So when you first try to talk to somebody, you need to not be trying to sell them. You need to be figuring out whether or not they are your customer. How do you do that? By giving them a great experience, lighting up that sign on the top of their head that says, make me feel special. But you're gonna talk about that a bunch. We're gonna talk about that a whole, whole bunch. But that's what you're gonna wanna do in order to make sure that you're automatically starting off on the right foot. Be genuine. Genuinely introduce yourself, find out what their name is, you know, and find out where they're from. Those are not qualifying questions, which is step two. Qualification. A lot of people make the mistake between the introduction and the qualification stage, and they don't do a good job qualifying. Why? Because your qualifying is asking basic questions. Where are you from? What do you do? Why do you come here? What do you like? Those things are boring right get all that out of the way in the introduction and be genuine about it actually get to know them in about 30 to 90 seconds that's a long time i've been talking for almost 10 minutes and i've said a lot right so step two with qualification that's really where you're going to find out the meat of the information that you're going to need and in step two which is the most important part of the steps to the sale. In step two, that's where you figure out if this person is an appropriate fit for your service, product, or brand, and what specific thing is going to work for them. We'll circle back around to that, put a pin in it. Step three. Step three is where you build the problem. You should have already gotten enough information at step two to be able to determine what product they need and why they need it. So you're not gonna go right to, oh, I have the perfect thing for you, skipping through all the steps to the sale. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, it's too fast. It's like asking a girl for her number too fast. Like, you didn't even get to know me first. Like, whoa, wait a minute, right? You wanna be very genuine and authentic throughout this conversation and this process. You also wanna maintain control of the conversation. You do that by listening. We'll talk about all that stuff in another video. I don't wanna overwhelm you with too much information. So, in step three with building the problem, you should already know what the solution is, which is step number four, making yourself the solution. So, as you build that problem, you're gonna be looking for a lot of affirmation from them. Yeses, yeses, oh my gosh, you were actually listening. You can nod your head with them like, right, we're affirming it. Not to be little grown people like their kids, but just like you do with a kid. Now, were we supposed to do that? Are we going to do better? The issue is we grow up and we start thinking that we're better than kids. When kids really have brilliant minds. They just have less life experience than us, right? Step number five, closing the sale. Now, the reason I zoomed through here is because this is where everybody gets to 
the excited part of, oh, always be closing, ABC, always be closing. I have a different theory about the ABC message. ABC, always be closing, always be closing in your mind. Don't always be trying to get somebody to the close to go ahead and take everything off and give it to you, right? You don't want to go into the close too quickly. When you get to the close, when I train people in sales, it should be a very fluid process. A rule of thumb is if you have to ask for the sale, you did it wrong. If you do a good job qualifying, which is the most important part of the steps to the sale, you should build a problem that you actually realistic and thoroughly heard realistically and thoroughly heard them say, and you're gonna give them a solution. You brought out their pain point and you gave them a solution that makes sense for their problem. So the obvious next step needs to be the clothes. It shouldn't be, well, uh, do you want it now? No, they should automatically want it now, right? That's what should make sense. So let's recap. Step number one, introduction. Be real, be authentic, genuinely get to know the person. Don't badger them with questions. Have a conversation that's really honest and true and authentic to you and to them. Step number two, most important part of the steps to the sale. Qualify, qualify, qualify. We're gonna talk about qualifying questions in a different video. Making sure that you're asking the right questions to where you don't make this person feel absolutely badgered and bombarded with 50,000 questions, but asking really good intentional layered questions that are gonna get them to open up and talk to you about what their problem is. Step number three is where you use their language back to them. You say, is this what I heard you say correctly? If I have the right understanding, this is the problem that you're having. Once you get that affirmation in them and they're like, yes, oh my gosh, I feel like this is therapy, you understand. Number four, you make yourself the solution because you are. And guess what, if you're not, Customer service comes in, and that's where you need to point them in the right direction to somebody. All money is not good money. If you do not have the appropriate solution for them, then your customer is coming, and you're not going to get to them if you're trying to take everybody's money. You need to send that person to where they actually belong. Step number five is closing. Now, closing and consolidating in a lot of companies is an additional step, but for me, if you did the right job closing, then consolidation should be the consumer experience. That means you're walking them through how to get set up, how to get signed up, how to get the product, how to use the product. You're going to spend time. You don't just throw them away like, oh, I got your money now. Get out of here for the next one. No, you do your due diligence to make sure you give that person a good experience. At the top of my website on queenofmarts.com, it says, customer experience is the best billboard. It's going to bring you a whole lot more money than ads. And I guarantee that because you make people feel good by actually giving them a true and authentic good experience that they are going to go and sell your business business product or brand for you. So that has been another episode of Queen of Gems. I hope you learned something today. Comment and let me know what your favorite tip was. Let me know. Kima, that's us. I gotta know. This is a new channel. I'm here to grow with you guys and until the next time.